Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about the importance of revelation. What is revelation? Can anyone answer that question? When something is revealed to you. That's right. Matter of fact, you can actually get an understanding of what revelation is in the word itself. Is what? Reveal. Reveal. That's right. Reveal relation. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you what's amazing. If you actually look up the Greek word for revelation, guess what it is? Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Isn't that something? <laughs> apocalypse. That's where we get the word apocalypse uh, from. Uh, what I found when I did my studies in Greek I was shocked to find out how many words that we use in English that are actually Greek words. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the English language and Greek are very close. Yeah. That's something to think about. <laughs> yeah, the alphabets are the same. Huh? Isn't that something? So we need to really do it. One day we're going to do a really deep... Um, study on this Greek and English thing. Um, matter of fact, some of this I'm bringing out in uh, White It Out 3 is going to talk about uh, this connection. Okay, But anyway, back to the subject here about apocalypse. Now, the word actually means um, to be revealed, um, enlightened, um, or revelation, manifestation of knowledge, basically. Okay? To have something enlightened, to have um, your knowledge, or to have, or to get an enlightening understanding about something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there's a story I want you to read. We're going to go to uh, Ruth chapter two, and I'm going to let Deborah. I'm going to let you um, read this. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field, and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came, and gleaned in the field, after the reapers, and her hat was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set, that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now, that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Okay. Now this is a, a very interesting what I um, want to bring out in this particular um, study. Okay. I want to talk about the fields of Boaz. Okay, the fields of Boaz were just full of corn. They had so many uh, reapers and gleaners that would go out and gather the corn, and then she was all day just gathering, gathering the corn, gathering food. Okay, and the scripture says here she gathered so much, if you look at verse. Um, Okay, okay, verse 7. It says, And she said, 
I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and have continued even from the morning until now. And she tarried a little in the house. See that? She was out in the field. She didn't come in the house hardly, only a little. But her most of the time she spent, she was what? Gathering. Now you getting what I'm saying here? She was gathering in the fields of Boaz. Just gathering. Now you picture this field that's full of all this corn. And all these gleaners are out there just gathering. And she was out there gathering with, with them. Now, I'm going to tell you where I'm going with this, okay? Now, according to the scripture, okay, let's go to Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. And Elijah, I'm going to let you read that one. But you, Daniel, close up and seal the words of the scroll until the end of time. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. Okay. Now, he said, seal up the book, even to the time of end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Okay. This is the time we're in right now. Where knowledge is increased. This is the field of Boaz. You understand where I'm coming from? This is the field of Boaz right before you. Where now knowledge can be greatly increased. But not just knowledge. Because the Most High through the Ruach is trying to give us a certain knowledge. He's trying to give us a knowledge that's going to cause us to grow in him. This revelation knowledge. Knowledge through revelation. We're in that time. The field is before you. Can you see it? The field is before you. This, the ability to get into even the Hebraic scrolls into the Hebraic language is now right at your fingertips. I can go back 30 years ago and it was almost impossible for just anyone to have the Hebrew text right at their hands like you can have it now. You understand what I'm saying? You can research Greek, you can research Hebrew, you can view um, the actual um, Codex Anonicus online, you can view various translations, um, actual um, 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 scrolls online, you can view some of these things. They have the Fashida that you can view online, they have all of these things that you can actually view now. You can do your research is just different than it was 30 years ago. You didn't have all these things at your hand. You see, so now what are we talking about here? The field of Boaz. All of this knowledge is right at your hand. So what are you going to do? Huh? Are you going to go out in the field and glean? Or are you going to waste time? Huh? You going to waste time in the house? Huh? Waste time playing video games? Waste time on the cell phone, hanging out with your friends. You're going to waste time. Uh, what are you going to do? You see, this is the time now. This is the time. We're at that time. Now, I want you to think about this. This is a time of revelation. Now, what else in the scriptures, the scriptures talk about? Okay, I want you to look at this. Go to Obadiah chapter 1. Um... The board, I'm going to have you read it. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 6. How are the things of Esau searched out? How, how are his hidden things sought up? Now, <laughs> notice the scripture says, how are the things of Esau searched out? How come it didn't say that about um, uh, Moab? How come it didn't say that about Ishmael? How come it doesn't say that about none other people but Esau? Because e not, Ham yeah, not Ham or anyone. It said it about Esau. It said the things of Esau will be searched out. Huh? His hidden things will be sought up. Because he has done so much that need to come forth in the last days. That need to be revealed to people so that we can see what's going on. The judgment that's about to come on Edom. That's why these things must be searched out. Huh? So that our people can come out of Edom. <laughs> that's
That's why. So now the Most High is trying to give us revelation. He's trying to give us knowledge and understanding. He's trying to give us these things. But there's something that we must do. And I'm going to try to give you an understanding of, of just how important this revelation is. You know, things can be revealed on every subject, okay, about anything. There's a revelation about it. You understand what I'm saying? It can be uh, dealing with the Most High. There's a revelation concerning Yehoshua, the Messiah. There's a revelation concerning this world you live in. There's revelations concerning Satan and his demons. There's revelation concerning even yourself. But the one thing that I've learned in this walk is the biggest revelation, even though you get revelation about Yah and about Yehoshua and, and all these other things, it seems to me that the Most High really pushes revelation about your own self. I found that strange. You know why? He wants you to know about yourself because as long as you work in, in um, uh, if, as long as you work as if you have no knowledge about things, you get what I'm saying? Your knowledge and your understanding will allow you to do more. It will allow you to do more in Yehoshua. It will allow you to do more in life. It will allow you to do more in business and anything that you set your hand to do. That knowledge and understanding and that revelation is very important. And it's a revelation about yourself. Now, one thing I learned is this here. The Most High was always in my walk trying to tell me something about myself. I'll never forget the day he came and he told me, he said, you're a mighty man of valor. I was like, me? A mighty man of valor? I was like, I'm just nobody. Mm -hmm. This was so 25 years ago. You're a mighty man of valor. So I would sit there and I would I, I pondered on it. I said, told me I'm a mighty man of valor. I said, what am I mighty in? <laughs> I felt like Gideon, you know, like what am I mighty in? You look around at this is the problem. We judge reality by the response of our senses, right? And once we are convinced of it, then we abide by those rules. So we'll sit there and we'll say, we look at that reality and we'll say, okay, okay, this is real. So you look at what you don't have and what you can't do, and you judge yourself by that. You understand what I'm saying? With the most high, he's not looking at those things. He's looking beyond those things because your ability is far greater than what you see when you look in the mirror. Are you understanding me? It's far greater than that. So when the Most High, he looks at you and he sees a mighty man, you look in the mirror and all you see is this little old weak person. And the Most High, he see a battle axe. He see a warrior. You understand what I'm saying? He sees somebody with the potential that could tear Satan's kingdom down. You understand me? One could chase a thousand, two could chase ten thousand. That's what he sees when he looks at you. But who knows so what he's trying to do now through your reading the scriptures and searching the scriptures, he's trying to impart that revelation into you so that you can one day step up in it and start believing it. Because it won't manifest unless you believe it. It ain't going to come forth if you don't believe it. You get it? So that's why he has to go through this process of teaching us things. You are studying while you're studying, and he comes and he reveals something to you, reveals a little bit more to you, then he reveals a little bit more to you because he's trying to get you to open your eyes and see the big picture. You see, revelation is when Yah shines light on his word and he gives you understanding. When you get that understanding, then you can see and you know. But you can't see and you can't know until he shines that light. Because all you're getting before he shines that light is just a peak. <laughs> That's all you're getting is just a peak. You can read the scriptures from cover to cover and know every word that's in the scriptures, right? And guess what? You're still only getting a peak. <laughs> you're only getting a peak. That's because you're looking through a glass darkly. You understand? You only vision, you only seen in part. It's like looking through some very dark sunglasses that you can hardly make out. You get what I'm saying? 
So now let's look at this because I want to cover these scriptures here. These scriptures are very important. Now look at this scripture here in Hosea. Turn to Hosea chapter uh, 4 verse 6. The Lord, I'm going to have you read it. Check the version. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou hast be no priest in me. That thou shalt be no priest in me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Okay. That's a very deep scripture. A lot of people quote this scripture, but there's so much to this scripture. He said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Okay. So then a person say, well, the lack of knowledge we're destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Well, let's get in the book. Let's get in the book and let's try to get all this knowledge. Ah, but I'm going to share something with you here because I talked about this before, okay? We get things a little mixed up here when it says this knowledge here. There's more to it, to this knowledge than just reading the book, okay? More to it, a lot more to it, okay? Now, let me tell you what I mean. Now, we talked about this before. We talked about um, the scriptures when it mentions ever learning, and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. Okay, now, what knowledge was this talking about there? If you're ever learning, what are you learning? Mm -hmm. Aren't you learning knowledge? Mm, that's right. So if you're ever learning knowledge, but never coming into the knowledge of the truth, mm -hmm. it must be two different knowledge that's than right. what he's talking about. That's See, right. that's why people think it's so much controversy in, in Shaul's teachings. Because they don't understand that some of these things is because of the way it was translated. Okay. Now, when Shaul made this statement, he said, he said, knowledge puffeth up. That was the knowledge he was referring to when he says, ever learn. They're ever learning what? The knowledge that puffeth up. Right. And you get it? That's what they're ever learning. Okay. But never coming into the knowledge of the truth, he was talking about epigenosis. So you got the word gnosis and you got epigenosis which is fullness ermine, okay? Now, this fullness ermine is very important and you can't grow without it. Mm -hmm. Kind of remind me of when one gets out of high school and then they go to college and they spend all this time learning calculus and getting into all these deep concepts about stuff that they're never going to use in their life. Yeah, exactly. And so they, they get older and they say, they say man, because it's much more to it than just getting that knowledge, just getting the book knowledge. They were ever learning that, but <laughs> now apply the concept that you've learned. Apply it now. How can you use it, you know? And they don't know how to use it. Some type of technical engineer. That's right, exactly. So basically, think about what we're talking about when we talk about this epigenosis um, coming into the full discernment, okay, which comes through the Ruach, gives you this full discernment. He gives you this enlightening. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm going here because it's very, very important that we, that we get and we understand um, that, this, that the Ruach is going to give us this and why does he take us there. Now, I want you to go to this scripture here. Go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and we're going to look at verse 9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Okay, read verse 10, 11, uh, and 11 also. And uh, actually read it all the way to verse 12. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as, I, as also I am known. Okay. Now, notice what he says here. <laughs> he said, when I was a child, I spake as a child, and I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man... I put away childish things. Hmm. Mm -hmm. When you become a man, you're supposed to put away childish things. Mm -hmm. 
And we wonder why we look at men today. We see men 40 and 50 years old, right? Oh, still acting like little boys. Still, Some of them still walking around with their pants sagging. It's perpetual <laughs> youth. <laughs> Snap back, turn. Yeah, exactly. They're stuck <laughs> in that perpetual youth. They stuck in that perpetual youth, right? Still all like into the... <laughs> trying to get a rap career going at 50 years old. That's funny. And um, <laughs> they just still into that whole thing, going out shooting ball. I knew a guy, and I, used to, I used to trip out on this guy. He used to tell me, yeah, man, I'm going to the park. I'm about to go balling. Guy, 50-something years old, about to go to the park, ball with these young, young, young kids. You know, and I'm like, um, you know, I understand if you want to go shoot some basketball, you know, you're trying to keep in shape and all. That's all good. But I'm talking about people who don't seem to be growing up. You supposed to be growing up, you see? Yeah, yeah. We supposed to grow as people. When we get a certain age, we supposed to put behind us all those childish things, you see? Another thing I noticed too, like with this new year, new me crap. Like people have been saying that since 2011. Well, See that? Just ever learn to do the same thing year in, year out. Now, look at this here. Now he says here, he says, We know in part, we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Now, that simply means the most high, he, you, you see things in part a lot of times. A lot of things that you read in the scriptures, you're only getting peaks and you're only getting a, a, a peek at what's really there when you're reading the scriptures. But when the Most High come and give you that revelation, then it's like, oh my goodness. Now I see beyond just, just what the scripture is saying right here. There's more to it than just that. You see? And we get the full revelation, the full discernment of that truth. It's much greater than just reading it. You understand? It's much greater than that. You see? Now notice what he says here. He says, for now we see through a glass darkly, but... Then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. Okay? So this glass darkly is just like what I was talking about. We're looking through this glass darkly. Right? Now, and he says face to face. Now, what is he talking about face to face? Looking at this glass darkly and he's beholding something face to face. Okay? I'm going to show you what this is about, okay? And there's a scripture. I got a scripture. <laughs> I'll back it up with a scripture, okay? But there's uh, the word of Yah is like a mirror, okay? So this mirror, you behold yourself in this mirror, but it's darkly, you see? So you're trying to look at it. You're trying to see what's there, but it's so dark, so you need the revelation. So the most high, it's almost like being in a bathroom and the light is out. <laughs> you look in the mirror all you want to lay down the bathroom and there ain't no window in the bathroom or, whatever, or the curtains are, are closed and it's nighttime. You can't see nothing in that mirror. It's like looking in a dark mirror, right? But then the most high comes and he does what? What is, what is revelation? Enlightening. Yes. So he comes and he flips the light on and now you look in the mirror and you like, oh, wow, I see it. And then the light go back out, Right? So when the light go back out, now the Most High say, okay, you remember what you saw? Because I gave you a glimpse. I just gave you a revelation. Do you remember what you saw? And when you take those things that you saw in that revelation, that moment, then you take those things, you go meditate on That's why I say meditate on it. Yes. And then what happens? Then you become so much enlightened. You say, man, I remember what I saw. What did you see when you look in the mirror? Mm -hmm. What did you see? I'll tell you what you saw. You looked in the mirror and it said, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes. So when you saw that, you said, man, I'm greater. What's him that's in me, Yehoshua, that's in me is greater than him that is in the world. Mm -hmm. Right? And then the most I come one day, you in the mirror, you looking again. It's all dark in the room again. He flipped the light on and he showed you what? That you are more than a conqueror through him. So you look at it, you saw this conqueror, right? You done looked in the mirror and he shows you some big strong person sitting there with a shield, with a shield and an armor on, with a sword in his hand, looking like a big warrior, right? And then the light go out and then you walk away and say, oh, what did I just see? I forgot what I just saw. I, I forgot what I just saw. <laughs> and the Most High is trying to reveal to you what you are in him. 
right? Now, sometimes these revelations will take more and more and more to come before you start to walk in it. You see, just like when the scripture tells you that if you, you can speak to the mouth and tell it to be removed and it shall be removed, but people speak all the time to things, right? And they don't get moved, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the lack of what? Faith, right? Yes. But when we're getting revelation, it's building our faith. Right. You understand? So that we're getting stronger in our understanding so that we get to the point where we can speak to these things and they will be removed. Right. Because the word is, is true. It's absolutely true. You see? So basically... I want you to understand that this is this. I'm going to take you to the scripture and show you this scripture now. Let's look at this scripture here. Let's go to James chapter 1, verse 23 through 25. And I'm going to let Mama, I'm going to let you read it. You can read it from here. Oh, okay. Right there. For if any be a hearer of word and not a doer, he is like unto man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Blessed in his deed. Now, back to what I was saying. See, it's just like looking, beholding yourself in the mirror. So the most high, he's trying, when you're looking at the word, he's trying to show you you in his in this word. He's trying to show you you. You understand? Okay, so the most high, this, this is a powerful scripture here because there it is again. When you read in the word, the most high is really trying to show you yourself in his word. He's trying to show you in the word who you are and, and, what, and what it is about you. This. Now, now many could argue and say when the Most High said that to Gideon, it is a mighty man of valor. Then he said it because he could see the future. Okay? But actually, he was looking at Gideon himself. He knew what he had put in Gideon when he created Gideon. You see? And he knew that Gideon was this man, this mighty man of valor. You see? And the Most High is always trying to tell us that this is what we are. And he, he don't want us walking around feeling weak, feeling defeated all the time. You There is power in you if you have the Ruach. Huh? If you have the set apart spirit in you, then you have power. You understand? But who knows it? See? The most high got to reveal something to you about that power you got in you. He got to reveal to you how to use it. Many people don't know how to swing the sword. You know, they don't know how to swing the sword. Swinging it wrong, they, 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 they just swinging it wrong. Some of them ain't even pulled it out the, out the sheet yet, you know, to be able to swing the sword. You see, so basically there's something to this that you really got to understand. I know it says that, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and we know that word liberty wasn't there, okay? That's a, a, a translation, translated word, okay? But... Basically, when you look up into the perfect law of liberty, or the Greek word is, I'll get you the Greek word here, the actual word for that. Okay, the Greek word for um, liberty is actually uh, freedom. Okay, isn't that interesting? <laughs> freedom, free eatum. <laughs> we would talk about that on another on another one. But anyway, um, it's being being free in, in Yehoshua, okay? Uh, what he has um, blessed you with and being able to walk in that power, okay? So when a person actually look into this thing, look into what he has done for them and what he has created in them, then they're able to walk in it. So you can't walk in it if you don't know it. Right. If you don't know it, you just can't walk in it. You, who can walk in being uh, uh, victorious if you still walking around thinking that you defeated. You understand? So something got to change here, right? Got to change here. Because if it don't change here, it ain't going to change here. You get what I'm saying? Are you understanding it? It ain't going to change physically if you don't change it up here. Okay? Which leads me to this next scripture I want you to look at. 
Now let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Now I'm going to read this one here. And this is what it says. But we are with, with open face beholding in a glass. Uh-oh, here it is again. Beholding in a glass the glory of Yehoshua. Huh? Re beholding his glory in a glass. What do you mean by beholding it in a glass? <laughs> are you seeing what I'm saying? Here? What, what I'm trying to show you here? Now, think about what I'm telling you here. Now, if you got the Ruach and you got the set apart spirit, right? When you go look in the mirror, you're beholding the glory of Yah in you. <laughs> Are you seeing it? You've been holding the glory of Yah in you. All that power is in you. If you got the Ruha, it's right there in you. But who knows it? So that's why he has to keep giving you these revelations, keep giving you understanding. Then it says what? Our change. It says, get this here. Now, it says, open, behold, in the open, in, uh, open face, Beholding in a glass the glory of Yehoshua. Are changed into the same image from glory to glory. You see that? Changed into the same image by revelation. And I'm going to prove to you that it's through revelation. Okay? Now, there were some scriptures I came across a few years ago. And when I saw these scriptures, I kept getting them mixed up. I kept saying, wait a minute, isn't that the... I kept saying, man, it, it must be another scripture. Because these three scriptures sound just alike. But the most high, what he, was trying to, what he was trying to do was he was putting the puzzle together for me. Pretty deep puzzle, too. <laughs> but when he was putting this puzzle together, at first I would remember one of the scriptures. And then one time I came across another. And guess what? They're not together. Okay? So I know we, we like to read the scriptures line upon line, precept upon precept, so we don't miss anything. Okay? But sometimes the most high have pieces way over here and way over there even in different books you get what i'm saying and sometimes he'll give you one and you'll remember it and then one day you'll look you say oh that's the missing piece it was almost as if they should have been written together the this piece i'm going to show you here so now let's look at this let's go to corinthians this is second corinthians because it's it's very important that you understand what's going on here okay when we came to the Most High, and we receive his Ruach, okay, the set apart spirit, something happened to us, okay? But what happened? Our old man, which is our old self, our old nature, was crucified with Yahushua, okay? Our old nature. So we have the old nature, and what happens? Then there comes the new nature. So he crucifies the old nature so that the new man can come forth. Kills the old man so that the new man can come forth. We are buried with him by baptism into his death. That's what Shaul was talking about. Okay? Now, this new man and old man transition, the old man to the new man transition, many of us are clueless to what's going on here. But the power of it is incredible. It will be incredible in your life. Okay? Now, let's look at this scripture here. And let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Deborah, I'm going to have you read it. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Now. <laughs> okay. Okay. It says here, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, that's the old man. The inward man, the new man, is renewed how? Day, day by, by day. day. He's renewed day by day. Okay? So every single day he has to be renewed. Okay? But how is he renewed? Now, I'm going to give you another scripture, and I will tell you, it seems like these scriptures should have been right close to each other. They all should have been close to each other. Let's go to the next one here, and keep that one up so you can, I may have you read it again, okay? Let's go to the next one. The next one is Ephesians chapter 4, 
verse 22 through 24. Deborah, you can read that one. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Okay. Now, it says that ye put off the former conversation of the old man. <laughs> Ain't that what we're talking about? The old man, new man, right? So in other words, now that you know that he's crucified, don't continue to speak like it. <laughs> you see it? Now that you've been crucified, now that that old man has been crucified, don't continue to talk like him. Don't continue to speak like him. Why? Because the old man is weak. Huh? He's weaker than the new man. You get it? That old man, that old you, likes to complain, right? He don't like to speak powerful against his circumstances. He's a weak person. It's the new man that speaks to the mountain, right? So now that's what the Most High is trying to get you to understand. You have to put off the former conversation of the old man, right? Now, let's keep reading. Which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. Then he says what? And be renewed where? In the spirit, spirit of your mind. In the spirit of your mind, he's telling you to be renewed. Now, remember the last verse we read? It was in a totally different book. It says, though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed how? Day by day. Day by day. Where? In the spirit of his mind. You see the two? Yeah. See how they come together? In the spirit of your mind, right? Now, then it says what here? And that ye put on a new man, which after Yah is created in righteousness and true holiness. So this is some. it's like putting on a garment. You understand me? That's what this is like. You pull off that old garment, you put on a new garment. This is exactly what this is like. You understand me? So that's what the Most High is trying to show you here. He wants you to see this thing. He wants you to get what's being said. Now, there's one more verse. Because this verse is going uh, to bring that piece together. Now, let's look at this last verse. Okay? The next one is... Colossians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. I'm going to read that too. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Whoa, did you hear that? <laughs> it just brought it all together. Do you see how I brought it all together? So now, what are you talking about here, Paul? Because they were in different books. So when people read it, they're not getting to all the puzzles. That's why I take the Ruach to bring this stuff together so you understand it, okay? Let's look at this in depth now and see what he's talking about here. Okay, let's look at this. Now. Now, this is what it says. Lie not one another... Seeing that ye have put off the old man. So notice it says, you have put off the old man. So in other words, if you're in Yehoshua and you are filled with the Ruach, you have put off the old man, right? And it says, and have put and have put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. He's renewed how? In knowledge. Now, let's bring these three verses together. What do you have? Huh? He's renewed in knowledge. In the day, spirit of your mind. Day by day. Day by day. Do you see it? So now what's going on here, he's trying to give you an understanding how this, how the, the Ruach works. But now, let's look at this. I'm going to do a test, okay? Let's go here and let's look up the Greek word for this knowledge just right here and see if it's gnosis or epigenosis, okay? <laughs> let's look at that, okay? Now, for the word there where it says, and the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, that word is epigenosis, full discernment. Hmm. So the new man is only renewed in epigenosis. Only in epigenosis. Because it's a revealed knowledge. Huh? It's a revealed knowledge from the most high revealing things to you. Don't you know you can't grow? Let, let, me, let me share something with you real quick and think about what I'm saying here. You can have a person 
that can read the scriptures from cover to cover, right? And have read it from cover to cover for years. May have read it from cover to cover eight or nine times, right? And they might not get one revelation. Isn't that sad? Mm -hmm. Not get one revelation. Not one revelation that can renew that inner man in them. They just not. Nah, they just a walking book. They can tell you what this verse say over here, tell you what that verse say over here, but they got no wisdom, they got no understanding, and they got no true knowledge. You understand what I'm saying? They are, they're not, that's, that's why they can't walk in that power. Because they don't have nothing. It comes, don't you know revelation is power? Each and every time the most high shine light on things in, this, in the scriptures that's dealing with you, it's going to bring power to you. It's going to give you strength. It's going to give you so much strength that you can go through anything. Let hell or high water come, you can stand to it. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can stand to it because he has built you up and has made you strong through revelation. Mm -hmm. That's why the apostles were as strong as they were. They were ready to lay down their life. When well, somebody came with a, with, a, with the axe to chop off Paul's head, he was probably like, make the axe sharp. <laughs> Let's go on and do this. Yeah. You know, it's time to die. He said to die is game. Yeah. We don't walk around like that, do we? Mm -mm. To die is game. It's game. Most of us try to preserve our lives. Yeah. But they were ready to die for, for, for the preaching of the truth. They were ready to die. You understand me? They were ready to die. And I'm putting this word out there. And I don't care who don't like it. I'm ready to die for it. You understand? Because they were built up in their spirit with strength, with spiritual strength, like you wouldn't, have, like you couldn't imagine. Now you know it's amazing. That's why it's important that we get these revelations, because as long as you keep looking, you go, you go look in the mirror, and you keep seeing that weak man there. The Most High want to show you what's really there. He really want to show you what's there. He want to show you that, oh, you got gifts. You got abilities. You have no idea what you're going to be able to do. You know, you're going to be a mighty man. You're going to be able to tear down Satan's king. Huh? I'm going to send you for him. You, yeah, you. He like, me? Yeah, you. I'm going to have you going to fight Satan's king. Don't you know there's so many warriors walking around here who just don't know it? Huh? Just don't know it. You know what I see sometimes? This is what I see. Imagine this, okay? Imagine if you looked out and you saw this big, tall, strong brother, okay? Muscles like this, and he's sitting there with an arm on and got a sword on the side, right? Huh? And then all of a sudden, all these little bitty men just come just beating him up, slapping him around, knocking him around. He, oh, 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 little bitty short old men come just smack him, smack him. And he just fall off, oh, oh. And the most I sitting there looking at this big old strong dude like, man. <laughs> Get up, dude. So the most I said, okay, that ain't enough to make him angry enough. Then he said, come on, let's sit. Um, he would tell Satan, send about a uh, hundred men to jump the dude, make him mad, you know? The hundred of them come, they jump all on him, you know what I'm saying? And that's what it's like, they come jump all on him, and, and all this, and he, oh, they smack him, beat him down. And he's like, most of sitting there looking at him like, man, this dude, you got on an armor, you got a shield, you got a sword, you got all this stuff, and I made you big and strong. Why are you letting them beat you down like that? And then finally you get mad, and you get mad, and he come up, oh! Swing the sword and wipe them all out. And he be standing there looking like, wow, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. I hate to say it, that's what I see all the time. Mm -hmm. huh? they, uh, marvel not at these small works or something like that. Yeah. Didn't he say greater works than these shall ye do? Yes, he did. He said because what? I'm gonna go to my father, huh? And I'm gonna make a way for you to be able to do these greater works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? But we too content with the little stuff. No, yeah. no, no. I'm just, you know, it kind of reminds me of a story. I heard this story years ago about this uh, motivational speaker. But he said uh, he went by the pond, by this pond, and he noticed this guy was catching all these big fish and was throwing them back. So he looked at him and he said, um, uh, why are you throwing all the big fish back? He said, well, because I only have an itty bitty frying pan. 
So I gotta catch itty bitty fish. So he gotta catch little fish because he got a little old frying pan. He throwing all the big fish back. You know, at least cut the big fish up. <laughs> you know what I mean? But man, that's the point that I'm trying to make here. We are too small in our thinkings. We're too small as it relates to y'all and what y'all y'all want to do some major things in your life. Do you understand me? He want to do some things so big that's going to rock the world, and I know he do. But he can't if you just like a stubborn mule. He trying to teach you, trying to bring you, trying to give you more revelation, trying to give you more understanding. Huh? Mm-hmm. Listen to what Boaz, back to that story. Listen to what Boaz told uh, Ruth. He said, don't go out in nobody else's field. Right? He said, come and glean right here. Isn't that amazing? He said, come and glean right here because look at the food. Right now, in these last days, there's a field before you. And he's trying to get you to come on, clean. Look at the scriptures, right? It says, do not wisdom cry huh? Yes. from the mountaintops. She's just crying. Oh, ye simple ones. Oh, ye simple ones. Come on. Come to me. I'll give you wisdom. Mm-hmm. And the simple ones don't want it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't want it. Wisdom crying. She just crying. And nobody want it. Fools love simplicity. Yeah, fools love simplicity. You understand? So the most high, he, he said, come on, get, t- hey, don't go into no other field. Here's a field I got for you. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to take you to a field, and he's going to present to you all this food. And he wants you to gobble this food up. Just gobble it up. Get it all. Gather. Glean all day there. You understand what I'm saying? Get revelation and get knowledge. Seek him for more. Pray. And, and for goodness sake, fast. Okay? I love to eat. My, my, my wife would tell you, I, I love to sit down to a nice um, uh, meat meal with some uh, baked chicken or something like the curry chicken. And yeah, I love some curry goat, <laughs> you know, or, or something like that. I love to sit back. But guess what? I love to fast, too. I enjoy fasting because when you when you go on a fast, the most high start revealing things to you right away sometimes. I only make it to the third day sometimes before the most I start to reveal something to me. You understand? So I want you to understand that we have to do all of these things, but we got to understand that that new man must be renewed day by day in epigenosis. Now, I'm going to lay something on you, and I want you to get this before I close, right? Now, if the new man needs to be nourished day by day in epigenosis and you're not getting it well then guess what's going on with your new man he's dying he's dying (laughs) he's starving are you getting it he is starving huh because he must be renewed in epigenosis day by day that's why it's important that you meditate the most i give some Go and meditate because now you're feeding that new man and he's getting built up. You understand? Man, I hope you're getting this because it's so important. These are, the, and I'm giving you these teachings because these are some of the things that have made such a huge change in our life. Me and Deborah, it has made a huge change in our life. Okay? We have been doing um, meditating and um just study in-depth studies for years we've been doing this you know um and praying fasting and i'm here to tell you that it's these are all the things that the most high revealed to us and have caused us to grow and cause us to be able to speak to mountains and watch mountains just go away cause us to witness healing in our life in our kids lives you know we have kids to be healed all these things the most high want this power and he, he want he wanted to be manifested in your life too and all it takes for you to just start getting in the word start seeking him allow that transformation okay that transformation from that old man to that new man because that new man that's where the power is it's in the new man it's not in that old man it's not in his conversation it's not in his ways it's not in anything in the old man we got to put off that old man you see we got to put him off. Mm-hmm. That old man, he's just the old you, mm-hmm. your old nature. 
We have put on a new nature now. It's a nature in y'all. That's why um, Cho, he made this statement. He said, I am crucified with, 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 with the Mashiach. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I, but the Mashiach lives in me. Yes. Huh? That's why he says, it says, if any man be in who? The Mashiach. He is what? A new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new, and all things are of Yah. You see it? So that's what's going on here. The Most High is, is simply trying to give you the understanding of how important it is that you seek for revelation so that he can give you that epigenosis. Okay? So on that note, I'm going to say shalom.